Hi YouTube, this is a quick video to show off a uh, brand spanking new 2x72 inch belt grinder that I just finished building about 30 to 45 minutes ago. Um, get a lot of questions on, you know, what's the best belt grinder to buy and or can you build your own, you know, all those sort of things. Um, I have worked on a Burr King and a Grizzly. Um, I really, I, I couldn't justify spending the amount of money to buy either one of those machines brand new when we have salvage yards, junk piles, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I believe this is the fifth belt grinder that I've built. Fifth, maybe sixth, something like that. And there's really not anything to them. I mean, basically, you've got a motor. Uh, this is a, a horse and a half, 120 volt, 1750 RPM. Um, a hard wheel grinder. I picked it up uh, with a stand uh, at one of the local pawn shops. I want to say for about eighty dollars. Now the wheels were way out of balance, the the hard wheels that were on there, and so it ran horribly at the pawn shop, which is why I got it for uh, for a pretty good deal. I thought so, but I knew I wasn't going to be running it for a hard wheel grinder. The the drive wheel here that was just an industrial cartwheel that I found out at the the junkyard and it uses the same uh, pinch uh, mount setup that the hard wheel grinder did. Basically you take uh, this nut off and these washers are usually flipped the other way around so you take all that off put the washers on backwards and then put the wheel on and then tighten it down. Uh, I think I might have had to, to turn a a bushing to fit the shaft on the inside of the wheel. The only other part that uh, that usually gives people grief is the tracking wheel. Now this one, right, I've made them before um, and they're not really much anything to make. All they are is a, a crowned wheel with a bearing in them and, um, and a through shaft to be able to mount it to your tracking mechanism. But this one right here is a pretty common one. You can pick it up from Jantz Knife Maker Supply for, I want to say, about 60 bucks or so. Now, to mount this one, I ended up uh, taking a piece of one-inch mild, um, drilling a hole out, turning it to fit uh, within two or three thousandths on the, the shaft that comes out of the, the tracking assembly, and then drilling and tapping the side for a set screw, welding that whole thing to this piece of angle iron right here this bolt goes through this piece of angle iron and through this piece of angle iron and it pivots pivots back and forth you can adjust it with this right here the top bracket well the the base this is uh, 3 8 inch just a 3 8 inch plate it's about two foot by two foot it was already cut at the steel yard so I figured that was close enough the upright um, usually you can find something at the salvage yard that's already you know some sort of upright that's already welded to a base plate um, I usually like doing that uh, while I can weld I'm not the world's greatest welder so there's usually some warping and twisting that goes along when I weld things so basically I welded this upright to this 3 8 inch plate and then bolted this 3 8 inch plate to the base plate so this, uh, this bench that it's sitting on right now, this is not going to be the bench that it sits on. So once we get it moved to the bench that it's going to sit on, then we can go ahead and bolt this clear through. And then since these two pieces aren't welded together, then you can shim it to get, you know, everything to line up right. Your bottom platened arm, it also serves to anchor the spring with the turnbuckle that comes up to the top uh, tracking wheel arm to give you tension on your belt. The through piece is just a half inch uh, bolt, I think it's like a six inch. Your top tracking arm, or your top uh, platen support. The platen is bolted to the support. Got spacers right here. The reason I do this is so that that belt won't cut into the arm right there and it lets you get uh, get you right up to it. Now when building these things I found it best to go ahead and drill all your holes a little bit oversized 
and that way there's adjustment built into it so if you need to let's say you need to move the platen the top of it forward and the bottom of it back well every single one of these okay we've got four four bolts here two in the top two in the bottom plus these two that hold the platen support to the platen arms okay so each one of these holes these are 3 8 inch bolts and I drilled them two or three sizes oversized so there's you know that much slack in each one of those holes you can move that that platen all around if you need to you can add shims in between here you know to kick this side out or bring it in um, I think that's about it the uh, the platen or the tracking arm it's a little bit tougher what holds the the tracking support or the tracking adjustment there what I did there was I took let's get you, there we go that's a good angle basically two pieces of this square tubing cut a uh, two and a quarter inch I think uh, standoff one here and one up here and then weld the whole thing together and then that bolt that comes through now that arm is on a you know it doesn't have it can't twist very much if you were to just bolt this on the side here you have to leave it bolted loose enough to where it will pivot but at the same time if you leave it that loose then it can twist in and out like this this double arm right there really uh, cancels all that out it can only move up and down once you get the bolt snugged up so basically yeah I mean this is a um, uh, you do have to uh, pay attention when you're designing the grinder and you're shopping for parts at the salvage yard that um, you keep your final belt speed in mind um, this is a 1750 rpm motor and it's a 8 inch drive wheel so that comes up to about 3600 uh, surface feet per minute that's how fast the belt is going to be moving I've heard that belts are rated to around 5000 surface feet per minute and that could be standard belts you know it could be I'm not sure but you know somewhere around stay below 5000 if you can my uh, my roughing grinder that one with the orange belt on it it's got a 3400 rpm motor with a 5 inch drive wheel and I want to say it goes about 5400 surface feet per minute which is really good for a roughing grinder but it's a little bit on the fast side for anything else oh the uh, the grinding table just cut off a short piece of 2 inch angle iron a bolt in here to mount it to the platen and then uh, a bolt this is just a hole and then this is threaded so you loosen up one bolt and the uh, square table see how that tables all wobbly and it gets out of the way and then you can put it back tighten it down so with one one adjustment you can go from a square table to uh, just the regular platen this table also adjusts if you take this bolt right here and loosen it up this you can tilt the table and then you can set it up with an angle cube or uh, you know any way you want to set your angle at but anyway there's nothing to a belt grinder like I said a motor drive wheel tracking wheel and then your platen support or your platen arms platen square table uh, nothing to it and tell you the truth I don't really uh, to quote Wayne Goddard he uh, wrote the $50 knife shop which is an excellent book um, for guys that want to build some of their own equipment and just kind of tinker uh, and to make knives also um, he said he didn't believe that a grinding belt was smart enough that it could tell whether it was getting driven by you know a $2,000 state-of-the-art belt grinder or a pile of junk from the salvage yard this one, like I said, 80 bucks for the motor. Uh, if you had to buy the tracking wheel, it'd be about 60. Um, the drive wheel I got from the salvage yard, you can probably pick up a new one for probably 20 or 30 bucks at uh, Home Depot or um, Menards or someplace like that. 
I did have to buy most of the steel new since this was a rush job um, and the bolts so I spent about 80 bucks at the, the steel yard the other day and I think 20 or 30 bucks in bolts and then of course you'd build a, a bench for it to sit on but that's about it oh I suppose you want to see it run Safety glasses with these. And it's just a piece of mild steel. And this is an old worn out belt. I didn't get that tightened down. Like I said, once it gets to the bench that it's going to sit on, then I'll go ahead and tune it up, <coughs> put any shims where I might need to straighten some things out, um, and then basically run it. I think it's going to be a real sweet grinder. Hope you enjoyed it.